There are many ROM hacks out nowadays, and Renegade Platinum is certainly one of them. The legendary Sinnoh hack is an all-time classic, and in this video, I decided to take a crack at it. Renegade Platinum offers a slew of detailed changes to the Platinum experience, including revamped trainers, new boss fights, thorough Pokemon changes, the fairy type, and even new moves. As per usual, I'll be attempting this game with standard hardcore Nuzlocke rules, but I decided to add some more restrictions on top of them. First, I've implemented additional level caps for most of the major boss fights. This should make boss fights more difficult for splits with a large level jump, and the additional level caps also bring with them additional EXP management as yet another added challenge. Secondly, I've banned vitamin usage or any method of EV training. EVs are a huge advantage in games where trainers don't have them. They can frequently compensate for bad natures and IVs and allow the player to overpower the opponent. In a game like Renegade Platinum, where enemy trainers have good natures and IVs, banning EVs turns a huge advantage into a natural disadvantage. Lastly, Renegade Platinum gives the player access to some incredibly powerful setup moves. These moves can totally break the game open and trivialize many of the major fights. To ensure that every fight will require comprehensive planning, all stat boosting setup moves such as Dragon Dance and Swords Dance are banned, as well as Substitute. Now, let's get started with the run. The optimal starter choice is obvious, don't overthink it, it's Chimchar. Why? Because you give the rival Empoleon, which your Infernape can usually counter. I'd recommend a plus speed nature that doesn't compromise either attacking stat, with good IVs in both since you'll likely be using physical and special moves. Mine is naive with Iron Fist and excellent IVs, so it's perfect for this run. The second order of business is heading over to Sand Gem Town and grabbing the second gift starter. This is where you should be getting Turtwig. Reset for Shell Armor if you don't get it initially, as Shell Armor Torterra is the only consistent counter to Eren's Scope Lens Sniper Drapion that you'll have access to for the fight outside Hard Home. Mine was adamant with shell armor and good defenses, so a, pretty much a perfect combination. Our next encounter is a Gift Eevee, a Pokemon whose evolution will be delaying for a bit. There are a lot of viable evolutions in this game, however, the consensus amongst most Renegade Platinum runners is to use Umbreon. Now, let's get to the actual early game encounters. At Lake Verity, we grab a Wingle, which is actually not great since we have no way of testing for Drizzle. It's a 50-50 to get it, and we miss out. Having a rain setter is very valuable in this game, and missing out on arguably the easiest one to get is unfortunate. This is a pretty rare encounter for this area, and I did think about killing it, but ultimately decided not to, and got punished for it. I also get a Starly, which is a staple in the Sinnoh early game. This will either get Intimidate or Reckless, both of which have their uses. Even in a power corrupt ROM hack like this, the Starly line is still fantastic. I repel Mendep for a shot at Growlithe on Route 203, but end up with Poochiena. This is buffed, but albeit still pretty dog shit. Mine has Quick Feet instead of Intimidate, which is kind of a tough scene. Once we make it to Jubilife City, we unlock some more items and encounters. First, we can fight the film crew to unlock our choice of three Kanto starters. Let's talk about viability for a second. Squirtle's main value in Renegade Platinum is utility and rain setting. The Squirtle line has a 50-50 to get access to Drizzle, giving it inherent value as a rain center. This line also gets access to Rapid Spin to clear hazards, yawn, and early protect, so there's good value in the utility until you unlock Drizzle. The Charmander line doesn't do all that much, but Charizard does get the Dragon type with Levitate, so its typing is excellent now. Unfortunately, it's just outclassed by other fire types more often than not. But my pick from this batch is Bulbasaur, which gets excellent early stab moves and utility, but really, really comes into its own when it evolves into Venusaur, where it gets access to Thick Fat. This makes Venusaur insane defensively, and it's a pretty obvious bring to numerous important fights. The poison typing is also nice for all the new fairies running around. At the trainer school, I get Nick. The Trainer School is its own met location in this game, so we can hatch it here. I get a Bonsley, which would be decent, but it has Sturdy instead of Rockhead, so there's no more late game recoil move spam, and Sturdy doesn't even work in this game. 
I then go get a Magic Carp on Route 218, Spinner Rack on 204, which is dog shit, and a very valuable Geodude dupe in Ravage Path. It's now time for a fight with Barry. This fight is fairly straightforward as long as you dodge some unfortunate metronome cheese. Of course it metronome's blast burn, but Geodude got out unscathed. Now it's on to Rourke's split. Our next order of business is to get to Orberg City. Before, I swing by Route 203 and grab a Bidoof. Beeburl is kind of an early game demon, but it doesn't see very much usage in this run, especially when I can't abuse setup moves with simple. Once I get to Orberg, I can grab a Hoenn starter, which is exactly what I would do if I was stupid. See, Steven Stone will give you a gift Beldum, and this thing is pretty nuts. You could bring Beldum to Rourke and Matang to Gardenia, and that's before you have access to the absolute late game nuke that is Renegade Platinum's Metagross. Mine is Rockhead, which will turn into Iron Fist, further adding to the awesomeness of this mechanical monster. I head down to Orberg Mine and grab an Aeron, which is a pretty fantastic encounter. This line evolves a bit earlier in this game, and has a great move pool. I also grab Fampy on Route 207, which is pretty decent. Donphan has good stats, but suffers from a poor move pool in vanilla games. While its learn set is greatly improved, the Donphan line unfortunately doesn't get battle armor in this game. My last encounter before Rourke is an Orberg Gate, where I repel the nip and run into a real loot. See, Lucario has a 50% chance to have the ability Adaptability, which boosts the power of stab moves by 2 times instead of 1.5 times. This means that any stab neutral hit is effectively a stab super effective hit, which is bonkers. With Adaptability, Lucario sweeps Rourke with no setup required. Unfortunately, mine is Inner Focus, but it's Adamant 31 attack, so it just needs an expert belt to clean house on Rourke's team. So much for trying to make the planning more thorough. After Rourke, we head to Floroma Town, where we can fight another round of camera people. The Johto starters are an interesting group, all of which have some legitimate viability. The Chikorita line gets an added fairy type, which helps it out a ton. It's not some like game breaking or S tier giftmon, but it's a bulky fairy type, so it's not bad at all. Cyndaquil has the most boom or bust potential of this batch, since it can get adaptability and eruption. There are fights that adaptability Typhlosion totally just cheeses, like you, you just click buttons, it's so brainless. Unfortunately the Cyndaquil in this run did not have it, and it had a shitty nature on top of it. Totodile is interesting, and it's the Johto starter I ended up going with. First off, mine was Naughty Nature with Intimidate, which is pretty epic, and for Alligator it gets the Dark type with an improved move pool, so this thing is pretty solid, and it does work this run. It's not a bad backup if you miss out on adaptability. After a brief run in with some grunts, I grab a Honey Tree encounter, which is a Tangela. This thing is pretty awesome, and Tangrowth is fantastic with its massive defense. I also get a Magnemite at Valley Windworks, which is obviously fantastic. Magnazone is one of the best mods in this game, period. I get a male Burmy from a honey tree on 205. This kinda sucks since I miss out on the giga buffed Wormadam line, and I have to settle for Mothim. It's not horrible, but Bug Steel with battle armor and those shiny new stats would have been excellent. Now, it's time for our showdown at the Windworks with Mars. While I wouldn't deem it to be a total run killer, this is the first fight where people will usually lose a Pokemon or two. There's some solid potential for hacks in this fight, and the Perugly is still pretty demon. Also, the Yanma can speed boost into an Omni boost, which is nasty work by all accounts. This is also the first fight where you'll really feel the added difficulty of the hard caps. Gardenia's level cap isn't until 26, so you can push EXP and give yourself a nice level cushion. With the additional caps, however, you don't have this luxury. Let's get into the fight. Mars leads with Zubat, and I have Geodude out front. I hit a rock throw into it as I get hit with a pretty soft wing attack. This triggers the notorious Gen 4 Switch AI, and Mars brings in Bronzor. See, this will activate if the AI recognizes that it has a Pokemon in its party that not only resists or is immune to your last used move, but also has a move that can hit it super effectively. In this case, it saw the resistance with Rock Throw and super effective damage with Gyro Ball. 
I then bring in Mynina to deal with the Bronzor and get in on Hypnosis, but a held Chesto Berry wakes me up. I hit a pretty hard bite, bringing it into berry range, and it retaliates with Gyro Ball. Another bite takes out the Bronzor. This baits in Yanma, and I bring in Magnemite on Silverwind, which walls it pretty nicely. It hits a Sonic Boom into my Magnemite, and I retaliate with a Magnet Boosted Shockwave, which kills Yanma. This then baits Peruglian, which goes for Facade as I switch into Lucario. Lucario can 2 hit KO it after a brief bout with Hypnosis. Pseudo Wudo can then finish the job, winning us our first fight with Commander Mars. We also have a fight with Cheryl before we go through Return of Forest, but this fight is free even with the additional level cap. After the trek with Cheryl, we get to Eterna City, which opens up a huge split of encounters. First, I grab Murkrow in the Turn of Forest, then I go to the old chateau to try and get the static road on. Unfortunately, it omniboosts twice, and I have to run from it because it would have been way too risky to stay in and keep trying to catch it. It's a shame because that's a great encounter. You can change Rotom's forms on the fly in this game, so its versatility is almost unmatched. I then fish into Turn of City and grab a Poliwag, which I will evolve into a Water Absorb Poliwrath, at another really good encounter. On 211, I pick up a Metatite, which is decent, and then go into Mount Coronet as part of the added quest to find Gardenia on Route 216. If you fish on the bottom, you're guaranteed a Feebass, which evolves into the now Fairy-type Milotic. Then on 216, I get a Sneasel, which is awesome in this game, although mine doesn't have Technician, which would have made it even better. There are a lot of threats on Gardenia's team. Her Blossom is incredibly bulky and can hax the player to all hell. Tangela is super physically bulky, Brottle has ground coverage for fire types, and a Leech Seed Protect set. Technician, Breloom hits really hard, and Cherim has a Focus Sash and some weather setting ability as well that you need to worry about, but the real demon on Gardenia's team is Rose Raid. Technician just makes this thing an absolute monster, and while you do get a great counter to it in Matang, it's not RNG proof. Crits are really bad, and so are Zen Headbutt misses, but something you kind of just have to play into. Gardenia leads with Blossom, and I start out with Mothum. I know that if I can dodge a Stun Spore, I can absolutely nuke her team with Expert Belt Bug Buzz. I low roll the Blossom, and just immediately get Stun Sword, which is not the RNG we wanted, but obviously you have to plan around this, so let's play into some outs here. After a bunch of healing from Gardenia, I can finally hit through and take Blossom out. As Tangela comes out, I pivot through Matang on Ancient Power to get Monferno in. Fake Out does some chip damage, and I can hit a pretty hard Flame Wheel. I get Parrot again the next turn, and I have to eat a Shockwave. Thankfully, I hit through, so I don't have to risk a crit and kill Tangela with another Flame Wheel. Rosarade is out next, and I bring in Matang to counter it. Thankfully, this thing doesn't have any status. It hits a Dazzling Gleam and a Matang on the switch, and I take a Magical Leaf before I hit a Zen Headbutt, which does big damage. After the berry, it's out of bullet punch range, so I have to stay in and risk a crit to kill the Rose Raid with another Zen Headbutt. Cherim is out next, and I bring in Murkrow to handle it. It goes for Grass Knot on the switch, which is good, and I hit a Drill Peck as it outspeeds and sets up the sun. I hit it down into the red, and here's my first real misplay of the run. So I anticipate a heal, but I guess Gardenia decided not to use it, and Murkrow just gets absolutely nuked by a Weather Bowl. I didn't really have a safe switch for this, so I would have been dodging a crit anyways had I hard switched, but at least I regained tempo here. I bring the monkey back in to fake out and kill it since it was the only thing that could hit it before the thing could move on my team. I pivot through Staravia on Grottle and then chip with Aerial Ace as I get least seated. This sets me up for a kill with Mothum and Bug Buzz blows right through this thing. Since I'm slower than the Breloom because of Paralysis, I, I can't really kill it so I bring in Ariados on a Thunder Punch. I outspeed and hit a Poison Fang which gets the poison as I dodge another crit on Thunder Punch. Then Gardenia randomly decides to use her second heal as I leech life, regain HP, and then the Breloom dies to poison, winning me the fight and my second gym badge. I steer this fight really hard, and for a gym that's not known for being difficult outside of Rose Raid, I played this pretty poorly. I risked too many paras and crits, and 
I, I know I, I wasn't going far if my planning didn't improve, but thankfully, eventually, it did. Then, I clear out the Eterna building, grabbing some new items in the process. This goes very smoothly, though. At the top of the building, we face off with Jupiter. I lead Magnemite to counter her Golbat, and she hits a Confuse Ray right off the bat. I hit myself first turn, eat a wing attack, and then break through on the second turn to do big damage with Shockwave. I tank Leech Life and finish the job with the second Shockwave. Sableye comes in next, and I bring in Layron on a Shadow Claw. I hit a pretty hard Iron Head, which does about a third. Then I switch Donphan in, not really sure why. Then I bring in Bibro on a Shadow Claw. I on the Sableye and get absolutely whacked by a crit knockoff. I'd live of course, but now I'm low. I bring in Layron on another knockoff, which would have killed if it crit. The Sableye falls asleep and I start to whittle it down with Iron Heads. B Barrel gets back in while the Sableye stays asleep and I KO it with Crunch. Next is Tangela, which Monferno can get in on Giga Drain and then outspeed and kill with Flamethrower. No, the crit did not matter. I bring in Donphan on Night Slash and Bulldoze to drop speed as it goes for Torment. I'm now speed tied with the Skun Tank. I win and then low roll on Magnitude since I can't use Bulldoze twice in a row. So I have to dodge another crit on Night Slash. I bring on Monferno on a resistant Night Slash which high rolled and actually would have killed if it crit and then killed with Flamethrower. This was another sloppy and needlessly risky fight. Watching this in hindsight is honestly mind boggling. Like, editing this stuff months after it's played is always entertaining for that reason, but uh, my god, what was I doing here? Like, uh, this is so messy. The next split of the game is interesting. First, I grab a Porygon at the Galactic Building. This thing has download, which is pretty cool. Next, we visit the bike shop, which has its own bet location now, and hatch Togepi Egg there. On 2 of 6, I grab a Gligar. Mine has immunity, which turns into Poison Heal, an insane ability, especially with other forms of passive recovery. Poison Heal Gliscor can just be like unkillable in certain situations. In Wavered Cave, I grab a Static Gabite, which kind of speaks for itself. This thing is decently hard to catch without being over leveled, but we wrangle it in eventually. Now it's time to fight Mira in Wayward Cave. This fight is pretty easy. Matang beats Togetic, Maidina beats Haunter, Lucario beats Porygon 2, and I double pivot on the Kadabra through Matang and Ariados to get Steasel in, and KO with Fate Attack, winning us our battle with Mira. I head back to Orberg to revive a fossil. You have your pick of the litter in this game, but the best picks are ultimately Arrow and Bastidon. I go with Arrow, but both are good picks. Unfortunately, my Arrow does not have Rockhead, but even with pressure, it's still good. Before I head into Mount Cornet, there's a Dawn fight with her Demon Low Putty that has a fighting type and buff stats. A lot of players decide to play as Dawn to fight Lucas instead since his team is easier, but I've never been one to run from the grind. Dawn's Piloswine gets beat by Matang with some Iron Heads and Bullet Punch. Gligar beats Grottle with 90 base power cross poisons, and the crit fishing pays off. I u turn out on the Clef into Ariados who eats a Moon Blast. After a bunch of hacks with T-Wave and Attract, I bring in Matang to Bullet Punch it. Now time for the Demon Low Putty. I intimidate Pivot with Gyarados to wither it down, and then handle it with Pelipper that has access to early protect and leftovers for passive recovery. I get low and switch Arrowwind on a crit dizzy punch and outspeed and finish the job with wing attack. Next it's time for Aaron. This is Renegade Platinum's first true run killer. There's threats all over this fight. The Dustox is pretty passive but watch out for Toxic, the Beautifly has a Sash, Venomoth has Tinted Lens and buff stats, and you should definitely watch out for Technician Scizor. But the real demon on this team is Drapion. Yeah, that Drapion that I mentioned in the intro. So this thing has a scope lens which raises the holder's critical hit ratio paired with Swords Dance and two high crit rate moves at Night Slash and Cross Poison. This means that if Drapion is using one of those moves, it has about a 1 in 4 chance to crit you on any given occasion. If you think that's not scary enough, I have good news. Because this Drapion also has Sniper, which in Gen 4 raises critical hit damage to 3 times normal. So, nothing lives a crit from this thing pretty much, and it can Swords Dance on top of it. The best way to counter it is a Pokemon that is crit proof, and that's where Torterra comes in. Because of Shell Armor, we are immune to crits, and after Stealth Rock Chip, 
Earthquake can usually take it out, making it the perfect Drapion counter. Now, let's see how this all played out live. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> this fight, and I have so much PTSD from this fight. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna taunt first turn. And then you're gonna rocks. And then I'm gonna rocks, and then I'm gonna kill it with two flame wheels. Okay, we're gonna rocks. This, so. Sorry, I made myself laugh. Thank you. Very cool. Like, oh. <laughs> okay, the scariest Pokemon, Dustox, is down. <laughs> uh, cause... It doesn't have Psybeam. No, it doesn't. Okay, it does. could like go... Okay, it's gonna go Beautifly, so we're still faster than Beautifly, so... It'll see a kill with Psychic. Oh, but you kill with rocks, right? Yo, you should've fake... fake out... <laughs> <laughs> Does it fucking matter? <laughs> <laughs> biggest troll. You're the biggest troll on this app. We do a little trolling. And we do a little trolling. Now it's gonna go Venomoth. Alright, you ready for this pivot? It should see a kill with Psychic. Alright, we're gonna go for Alligator. We're gonna go for Alligator. Into Aerodactyl. And we're gonna dodge a crit on Bug Buzz. Oh, Intimidate? Yes, very good. Goes well with Intimidate. Alright. Sleep Powder here would be huge, but I'm assuming it's gonna. Yeah, I do. Okay, okay, no Hyrule crit, no Hyrule crit. Easy. Okay, okay we kill with a wing attack. Yes, sir. Good And then what, Drapion comes out next? Stances? You might be cooked. Not totally. Because we're going to get an Intim. That's perfect. Okay. Nice. And if it Sword Dances here, it doesn't matter. You kill? Yeah, with flame wheel. Oh, okay. But it's gonna okay. it should see X Scissor. And if it sword dances, we're faster. Damn, you're just washing him. <laughs> Don't say anything until the Drapion comes out. <laughs> Please. Please. Damn, man, you should have fake out. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> no fake out? Dude, you might as well get the chip damage. I could have made you throw right there. Yeah, that would have been okay. disastrous. Okay. Uh, no crit, no poison. We're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. We should kill with Earthquake. Earthquake. No, we can't get crit because we're shell armor. Oh, nice. And we're soft sand. After rocks, this should yeah. kill. Yeah. If it lives, you just go to Don Fan. Inferno and fake out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, easy. Fun. After Aaron, we get straight to business. This is Fantina's split now. I head back to 208 and grab a Zangoose, which is pretty nice and will come in handy for the upcoming Ghost Type Gym. Fantina's team is pretty scary. Uh, her Drift Blim can pass stat boost with baton pass calm mind and starfairy dustclops and spiritomb are super bulky Bennett and gengar both hit really hard and her aceless magius is ghost fairy now with levitate and four total immunities thankfully there is one really consistent way to absolutely cheese this fight if you know what i'm talking about maybe skip ahead a little bit but if you don't allow me to explain this is where our gift Eevee comes in. Male Umbreon can learn a move called Captivate, which drops special attack by two stages. Because of Umbreon's insane special bulk, you're usually safe to crits, but here's the real cheese. When you captivate the lead Drift Blim, it will ever so nicely baton pass its debuffs to the other Pokemon on Fantina's team. With Shell Armor, uh, we can 1v1 a ton of stuff with Torterra. Now, let's get into the fight. We start with some Captivate, then it passes to Miss Magius. After a Switch AI proc, we repeat the cycle again. Then finally, we 1v1 with Torterra, never risking a crit. This baits Drift Blim back in, and we rinse and repeat. This time, Gengar comes out, and we live a Dazzling Gleam crit, so 
I can wish on this thing to heal Torterra. We get poisoned on Sludge Bomb, so this was pretty clutch, and we could eventually kill with Bite. Yes, I know, my Mons aren't edged, because EXP is tight here, I know Torterra gets crunched at 34, but it was still a two-shot either way. Then Magnezone kills Driftblim, even at plus one, Zangoose with a Rossberry beats Dusclops, and Togekiss beats Spiritomb with Moonblast. After Fantina, we have another berry fight, which is fairly straightforward and easy. Not too bad, all things considered. Our next big fight is the backlot tag battle. This fight wouldn't be too hard on its own, but you play with Barry, who just throws this fight on a generational level. You can get pinned into a 2v1 here quite easily, and you usually have to steer or dodge a crit at some point. There's a fair bit of RNG in this battle. Okay, the idea here is that we keep the Zong alive. Yeah. And we just focus the Wigglytuff. It's gonna first turn Thunderbolt on, uh, Saravia. Thunderbolt Saravia. Ideally it misses off the double team. So if you, yeah, if you can flinch too. If I can Iron Head flinch and then Iron Head into Bullet Punch, oh that's big. Oh. Iron Head into Bullet Punch will always kill the Wigglytuff. Okay, I'm gonna Flash Cannon because I wanna keep Snorlax somewhat alive. If we can get this to a 1v1, it's much more manageable. Okay, nice, good miss. Nice, that should kill. Nice. Yeah, Barry's actually cooking. Okay, we're gonna go Torterra, and I think we're gonna get a double kill here. I have Lumberry in case it teeter dances. That Bronzong is Levitate, so I think we can still keep the focus. Okay, Fake Out's not bad here. Okay, that might take Blacks out. Yeah. It does. Alright, Heracross probably lives in Earthquake. Alright, that's kind of a needless... That's kind of needless chip. <laughs> Whatever. Just need Raichu gone. And probably Zen Headbutt on the Heracross. Yeah. And then we can go Octillery on... Ooh, just barely. That's gonna go to Heracross. So now do you switch? Ooh, Heracross lives. Yeah, Heracross should kill this, so I'm gonna i I'm gonna get a free switch to Feraligator. Um Do I want Feraligator? What's gonna come in next? Probably Octillery, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to Milo actually. Not Toxic Croak. Okay, that's fine. It's gonna kill the Heracross and I think I'm gonna get a free switch. Nice. Alright, just me and you compadre. I did not calc that right, because I was not supposed to be dodging a crit there. But, uh, never punished. And then Grass Knot should finish the job. Beautiful. Nice, that was so well done. Top 10 VGC moments. I'm the best doubles player alive. Post backlot is simple. Grab Manaphy Egg, then get Pichu and Trophy Garden. Okay, so on 209, because of our encounter routing, we have a guaranteed Blissey. Blissey is the most busted Pokemon in this entire game. It literally does not die and trivializes every special attacker in the game, and the HP bar takes 20 years. It's so boring and unbalanced, I banned it and got Spiritomb instead. Okay, but seriously, Spiritomb is kind of an insane and super based pivoting and PP stalling machine. It's got amazing immunities and it actually hits decently hard. After I, I have a brief bout with some demon ace trainers and then it's on to Veilstone and Maylene's gym. We get to Veilstone where I can get a bunch of items from the game corner that are super balanced and I don't abuse whatsoever. Maylene is handled quite well actually. 
This fight is a bit overhyped in my opinion, or maybe I just had good counters, but the pivoting synergy between Leiron, Togekiss, Gliscor, and the ghost types is just a beautiful thing. She does have two demon mons though, in Infernape and Lucario. Infernape can beat the monster adaptability Lucario, fake out breaks the sash, and with good speed you can outrun Lucario and KO with close combat. Gliscor comes in to handle Maylene's Infernape, eating a crit, but also getting by with some poison heal. We played in a double crit, but playing around two crits is incredibly difficult to do safely. Anyways, this was a fairly smooth fight. There's another galactic tag battle in Veilstone, but it's easy, all things considered. We pick up some new encounters on the way to Pastoria, on 214 it's Rhyhorn, Maniac Tunnel is Diglett, at the lakefront it's Giraffe Rig, on 213 it's Gastrodon, a Gift Lapras in Pastoria, and Scorpi in the Great Marsh. It's a pretty decent haul. We have a berry fight coming up, and after a trip to visit Wake on 212, we get things rolling. Raichu beats the lead Star Raptor with some Thunderbolt action, Agron comes out to wear out the big lax, and after a war of attrition, we get through. Drapion with battle armor and a lumberry can give Breloom the work with a poison jab. After a speed drop, I bring in my sassed Raichu to KO with fake out. Infernape can whack the hair across, also toting a sash. Did I mention we go through a lot of focus ashes in this run? Yeah, in future runs, I do not abuse this resource to the same extent. I know this because this is me in the future. I attempted to beat Napoleon with Gastrodon, and I totally forgot how Storm Drain worked in Gen 4, or really that it doesn't work at all, so I just mirror coded it. Then I beat Arcanine with Rhydon. Decent fight, but a little sloppy. The next split from Wake to Byron gets pretty wild. Wake's gym has permanent rain. Well, it's not permanent since you can just change the weather, and my plan revolved around that. There are actually a lot of ways to beat this fight without weather, and this is the only weather fight in the game where I change it, so I guess that's kind of based. The first turn of Wake is you setting up Sun. A Yashi Berry keeps us healthy, especially because we need to crack a Rindo Berry on Quagsire. I cheese the heal turn and use Giga Drain to get back to full HP and kill Quag. Tangrowth then eats a crit Ice Fang and knocks off Gyarados' Wakan Berry. The sun keeps us safe from a freeze. Raichu comes in on an Ice Fang miss and whacks it with a Thunderbolt. Because of a Sash, Raichu can also safely frag Floatzel. Thick Fat Venu starts to make its money in this fight, absolutely bodying Polyrath in a 1v1. A Lumberry keeps us safe from freezing. For Alligator 1v1 Sharpedo, breaking the Sash and then annihilating it with Superpower. Drapion comes in on Energy Ball, and it's banded to kill with Poison Jab. Masterful. After Wake, we head up on a trek to Celestic Town, getting a Scyther on 210 along the way. There's some Demon Ace trainers on this route as well, although you could dodge them for the most part. At the end of the route, we have a showdown with Dawn and her Demon Low Bunny, but I'll skip over this matchup because this split is just packed with good fights. Everything goes smoothly here. We get to Celestic Town, grab Relicanth, and then have our first showdown with Cyrus. That also goes smoothly. The first two Cyrus fights in Renplat are pretty easy. Then we go down, back through Sand Gem to Powell Park, where we face off with Duroc. I mean this in the least perverted way possible, but Duroc is packing. This team is stacked with demon mons. Gallade hits hard, Reckless Star Raptor hits even harder, and Polion and Zam both have great coverage, and don't get me started on the Life Orb Metagross or Entei, because both are very hard to counter. Our battle gets going with a bang. Gliscor can one tap the Gallade with Fly, baiting Empoleon, who is countered by Water Absorb Polyrath. We do get a Switch AI proc, which lets us kill Alakazam with Weavile. Funny how that works out. This brings Entei out, and Brelikanth immediately gets crit. We have to dodge double crit to take it out with two waterfalls, and thankfully we do. Metagross is next, and we get Garchomp in on a Meteor Mash miss, and absolutely blast it with Choice Band Earthquake. Empoleon comes back in, so Wrath can finish it off. Staraptor is killed by Magnezone, who holds a Chopperberry to take close combat. Did I mention we're just getting started? The game then takes us to Candlelave City, where we have another absolute run killer. This fight is uniquely equipped to wipe you because of the Demon Curse Snorlax. See. Lax hits pretty hard as is, but its main weakness is its lower physical defense. 
when it starts to curse up, it just becomes unkillable. It has fantastic special bulk as is, so you're not breaking through it with a special attacker. This is a very, very well designed fight. There's also a myriad of usual threats, Arcanine, Bandit, Star Raptor, Heracross, and Napoleon. This fight is very hard. So how did we beat it? I never thought you'd ask. Raichu gets things rolling with a fake out into Thunderbolt to guarantee a range on Star Raptor. This baits the Demon Laxin, who I counter in a somewhat creative way. I delay the Umbreon evolution until 31 for Charm for the sole purpose of beating this fight. I can Toxic the Snorlax and wear it down faster than it can buff its attack. The only issue with this strategy was that I thought a Lumberry would have kept me safe from a synchronized proc if Body Slam paralyzed me, but it doesn't. So maybe Toxic this thing with another physical wall and then bring Umbreon in to charm it after, perhaps? Anyways, after a while the Big Lax goes down, so it should be smooth sailing from here. This score convincingly beats Heracross with fly shenanigans. Gyarados comes in to counter Empoleon, killing it with a Bandit Earthquake after some U-turn chip from Gliscor. Breloom is countered by the glorious Battle Armor Drapion, and it can two-hit KO it. We get Sport along the way, but the Held Lumberry takes care of that. Arcanine is countered by Pelipper, and Pelipper gets a max roll crit on a Flare Blitz and <laughs> lifts on 2 HP, which is kinda nuts, but knowing our crit range is paid off here. We're not out of the weeds yet, since our next stop is Iron Island, and we have another scary fight coming up versus Riley. He's got a crit machine Absol, it's pretty easy to kill. Slinking hits like a truck, and so does Guts Flame Orb Ursaring with a 100 base power stab strength. There's another adaptability Lucario on this team, a Leechy Berry Metagross that can also buff its speed, and a Dragon Dance Salamence. If you don't have Adaptability Typhlosion that can clean most of this fight with Eruption, you're in- Riley leads with Absol, which gets bodied by a close combat from Inferni. Salamence comes out, seeing a kill with Fly, so I go to a Sash Weavile and frag it with Ice Punch. Infernape comes back in on Bullet Punch from Lucario, and it gets its second kill of the fight with another close combat. Metagross is out next, and is 1v1 and cleanly 2-hit KO'd by Crunches from the Gator. Ursaring comes out next, and I bring Scizor in on Play Rough. There's one issue. I get the 10% attack drop from Play Rough, so now I can't kill a superpower. I go to Torterra and try to reset the drop and bring Scizor back in knowing I'm dead to 4 crit rolls, which of course happens and Scizor dies. Yeah, that's pretty unfortunate. Sometimes punished, I guess? Infernape revenge kills, getting its third frag of the fight, baiting in the final Pokemon Slaking. Slaking is 1v1 by Metagross using Hammer Arm and Protect to attack on the true turns. Well, that kind of sucked, and it's not looking too much better as Iron Island turns into a bit of a bloodbath. So, first off, I'm fighting a random trainer, and he is a Fero out against my Magnezone, and random trainers in this game usually carry level up movesets, so he goes for focus energy, and I'm like, oh, what the fuck is he gonna do, crit and drill peck me? Did you know that Fero learns drill run by level up in this game? Well, you do now. Then in the tag team section with Riley, my Venusaur gets the rash crit into a double target with Seismic Toss and fucking dies, so that's pretty bad. We go back to Candelave, which takes us to the hardest part of Candelave City Gym. Byron's Gym Trainers. See, I walked in here all willy-nilly, not expecting them to be absolutely packing heat, and I lose another two mons to a Demon Ace Trainer. Rest in peace to Donphan and Lapras. Gone, but not forgotten. Thankfully, Byron is the freest fucking fight in the entire game and gets swept by my Infernape all on its own, no setup required, I just taunted and put rocks up and it went to work. You can make a steel type gym hard, but this one isn't. Now we have some story bullshit and some galactic fights that were both pretty easy and go smoothly. Anyways, we make it up to Snow Point where a fairly intimidating doubles fight stands in between us and the 7th gym. The strat here though is pretty simple, keep Blissey alive and run a bunch of Brick Break to smash Marines, and we can handle the other threats as needed. I was also running a physical Manaphy set, which was kind of epic, but yeah, this fight isn't too bad, you have plenty of tools to beat it. 
I head into the snow point gym where everything goes really smoothly until it doesn't. So I'm fighting a random trainer and my Feraligator gets absolutely yeeted by sheer cold. Fucking unreal. Then we fight the snow point city gym leader whose name I forgot. Anywho, this fight is one of the hardest in the game and it's not particularly easy to set weather without a drought or drizzle mon. So I end up deciding to play in the hail. There's excellent coverage, bulk, and an absolute demon in Glaceon with Snow Cloak and Bright Powder. Good luck killing this thing. Mamoswine hits like a truck, so does Frostlast with Life Orb, and Walrein is super bulky. Our fight with She Who Shall Not Be Named is a bloodbath. Infernape whacks Abomasnow with close combat, I U turn out on Walrein and absolutely dunk on it with Polygrath. We pop the Chobbleberry, but this thing dunks on it so hard that the Chobbleberry doesn't even matter. Even though we get yawned, it, it doesn't matter because we have a Lumberry. Frostlast comes out and we go to Shift Tree on a potential Thunderbolt, but it goes for a Tract, so now we're baiting Blizzard into Magmortar. I dodge a Freeze and then outspeed it with a Scarf and KO with Flamethrower. Then Mamoswine comes in and it's a 50-50 to Earthquake or Stone Edge. I bring Shift Tree in to serve its final purpose, which is dying. And uh, then I bring Infernape in to Revenge Kill with Close Combat and it does so with ease. Then I pivot through Rhyperior when Weep Owl comes out so I can kill with Fake Out and a Mock Punch, playing around the Sash and our slight speed disadvantage there. Then the Demon Glaceon comes out and I'm beating Earth Power so I go to Gengar for free because of Levitate. Now all we have to do is hit a 93% range on Specs or a Sphere. Surely we will hit this. So we're just going to hit this range real quick. Where's Specs? Oh, we just missed it. Oh, it's going for Blizzard? No way we live this, right? Oh my god. Oh, we died of hell. That is a certified adamant Gengar moment. Then Magmortar comes in to revenge kill, but I misclick and I don't click Aura Sphere and click Flamethrower. I still kill it, but Jesus, that could have been a disaster. We head back to Veilstone and do more story bullshit and Galactic Hideout. Cyrus 2 is also pretty easy and goes according to plan. After that, we have a single battle with Saturn, but again, this isn't a hard fight. This next split of the game is the absolute apex of Renplat. After a climb up Mount Coronet, we have a face off with Mars and Jupiter, and a 12v12 with Barry. This is arguably the hardest fight in the game. You have to plan for so many potential situations, and you need to bring bulk, lots of bulk, and teach protect to everything. You absolutely need to be able to take hits and deal damage. You also need a bit of luck. Some of Barry's mons are quite frail and get absolutely smoked in the wrong situations. This fight is another great reason to pick Infernape as your initial starter because Barry's Empoleon can go absolutely apeshit in this fight. Its typing is phenomenal defensively, and those stab hydro pumps hit really hard, especially when that thing gets in torrent. Here's the team I built for this fight. Metagross, for bulk. Togekiss, for bulk. Agron, for bulk. Umbreon, for bulk. Tangrowth, for bulk. And lastly, Tentacruel, for bulk. I don't think I could truly capture the intensity of this fight with post-commentary, so I'll be cutting up the live bits. Here we go. Like, mid-fight calculatoring going on. Yeah. I have the sets for all of Barry's Pokemon, so I can try and use that to guess the AI. Alright, we're gonna Ice Punch the left side Crobat first turn. Okay, that's fine. Ice Punch into Bullet Punch actually always kills the left side Crobat, so we just need some RNGs here. Okay, right side Crobat's kind of not ideal. Because you want to try and kill the left side one first. Okay, but this thing's still alive, so it could get a kill. Best move for a Okay, nice, we hit the ice punch. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. 
Pogging, pogging, pogging. Yeah. I'm dying. Okay. So that's gonna break that's gonna break Bird Star after. Alright. Star Raptor? Does the Raptor just kill Oh it's gonna kill the Crobat, okay. Oh that's super cringe. It's fine. Yeah, so I think I get a free switch of Togekiss and I'm gonna moon blast light devire. Okay. Okay, wait, fuck. Oh. Wait, this actually fucks me. Cause Star Raptor's gonna die. And now I'm probably going to have to dodge. <laughs> oh god, this could be bad. Okay, we live. Oh. <laughs> Double focus. Oh, Snorlax. Okay, that does change what I'm doing, but I think it means Electivire is gonna attack Snorlax. Yeah, but you might get ice. Oh wait, are you slower than Gastrodon? I'm faster than Gastrodon. Okay. I think I can kill Gastrodon, direct Snorlax's attack into Electivire, and then it should uh, cross chop Snorlax. I guess it could ice punch me, but Snorlax is- it's much more likely to see a kill on Snorlax than it is on Tangrowth. So I think I'm sending this. Oh, what a read. What a read! Alright, you live this, Barry, you beautiful fucking bastard. No, he doesn't, actually. Wow. Gun tank. This is probably gonna be gunk shot. There's just no way I live both of these. Fuck, keeping that Electivire alive is like really scary. Because this thing's gonna die. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Oh. That's probably dead. Yeah, probably dead. Oh no, never oh, mind. It's not. <laughs> okay, that's a but big it, hold. It will be in a minute. Yeah. But if that means I get another turn of. Okay. Alright, we take those. Losing Togekiss is really bad for the Dalga Palkia fight, though. Alright, no crit, please. No crit, no burn. If it's no crit, no burn, then... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we back up. Okay. Probably not. Next again. Okay, Flare Blitz and the Evire to kill is kind of an elite play. Alright, please just Sludge Bomb into my slot, and then we're cooking. Okay, nice. It's definitely my most specially bulky Pokemon. Oh, into Yen Mega is actually sick. This might just kill it. Faster, though. Yeah, but I'm not. Okay, that's fine. That's good. That's good. So is Arcanine. I just want to see what everyone was doing. Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. So now there's no more rocks. 
Okay, Barry is actually cooking. Yeah, this is good. Only big, like, Sag is Togekiss death, because that Togekiss is so good for the Dialga Palkia fight. Okay. Not that we really needed that, but nice. Fine. I'm gonna sludge bomb the other Tangrowth. No. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, well, you get a free hit on Kangaskhan, which is not too bad. Yeah. Hopefully, it attacks Arcanine. Okay, nice. <clears throat> Breloom. Bronzong. Okay, that's the special Zong. Okay, so this is gonna. Tr All right, good work, Dick Taker. Yeah, that's understandable. Okay. Yeah, Play Rough does half on my Umbreon, so this is gonna be a pivot. This Empoleon does fucking. Metagross? Yeah, and then I think I Metagross, and then I can hammer him the Perugly. And keep the Zong alive. This is gonna do nothing. Metagross is a fucking beast, dude. Yes. We also have a Lumberry for Sleep or Swagger. Oh. Please tell me you have a Lumberry, Gary. That's big. Then you just cook it, right? Doesn't let that shit. Unlikely. Honestly, I didn't calc this. I just assumed it wouldn't live it. And I was correct. Speed drop's not really a big deal. Okay, so 2v1 now? It's a 2v1, I think. Nah, fuck it, we ball. Oh, she still has Sableye. I actually wall the Sableye pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna charm it. Okay, so I'll just crunch. Oh, you probably got a free switch here. Yeah. Sedge. It's probably gonna. Oh, what? Wait, when did I kill this Yen Mega? Wait, why did I not. Did I kill the Yen Mega, dude? I totally forgot. Other than the Togekiss death, this went alright. It's one of the hardest fights in the entire game, and you can easily wipe to it. If you're familiar with Vanilla Platinum, you'll know what comes next. Cyrus 3 is another daunting fight, and Renegade Platinum absolutely levels it up. It's now a back-to-back -back with a double battle followed by a single battle. The first fight features a Dialga and Palkia at level 70, 10 levels above our cap, which sounds scary, but there are a few aspects of this fight that are extremely exploitable. First, the Dialga's AI is random, and the Palkia's isn't. This is cheesable, plan accordingly. Secondly, they both have zero IVs all around, and thirdly, this game gives you a lot of tools. You probably have better counters than you think to this in your box, not to mention this is the time to get out the focus ashes and choice items because they will come in handy here. With a bit of good RNG, you can beat this pretty comfortably. Let's see how this plays out live. Shit, man. Damn. This music's fucking hype. Yeah, it is. It's good. Alright, motherfucker. Alrighty. We're gonna moon... We're gonna moon blast Palkia. And we're gonna protect... On... Infernape. Nope. I need to protect. I'm baiting a move into Infernape. Remember, Palkia's AI is not random and Dialga's is. Alright, alright. Better than you cook, my bad.
Does the Elgin not just like fucking flash cannon you? <laughs> nice, nice. Is close combat kill? No, but I have a sash. It's gonna two shot. Oh my god, that's insane. What a fucking strat. What's your level cap? 61? 60. But you just... 60 entering the fight. Cyrus is ace. So I edged yeah. all my mons. So... It's insane that I make you fight 270s. Yeah. You eat that, right? Yeah. You're so specially bulky. Milo has insane special bulk. We're gonna that's kill this. It, that's actually sick because I can keep my sash on Infernape. I do, you, she heals you, right? So she heals you? Yeah. Or you heal yourself. Maybe Cyrus heals you. I think you just, get, you just get healed. Cyrus? I think Cyrus heals you. What a guy. Yeah. Alright, we're gonna bait Cross Poison and Aggron. This is Choice Banded. Okay. Now would be a good time to set up if you could. Having a move that doesn't affect you, not a much con. Because the move that you're using has to be resisted by another Pokemon that also has a super effective move against you. Do you out speed? Uh, if it doesn't D-Dance. But I have a Sash. Fine. Completely oh, fine. Okay. Let's go. Do they have earthquake? Oh, it just misses. Easy, never punished. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. I guess the only thing that matters is uh, it, it could have gone random move. I guess. Yeah. Um. Yeah, at least you can. You could keep. You think I? You think I missed the range? There's no punish. It doesn't matter. I I think you hit it because you're just your RNG in this fight is already fantastic. Yeah. Last time I had a 91% range I miss it and got very punished, but there's no punish here, so we're okay. And we hit it, obviously. Yeah. obviously. Swords dance. If it's swords dance, it's actually pretty elite. It's totally fine. Oh, and then you just nuke it. So we have to break a sash. So, oh fake out in a mock punch. It's just that easy. When you can fucking cook like this, yeah it is. God. You, you, that was so perfect, like you had the fake out when it sword stance to break the sash. Oh, you just kill this We thing? could just kill this with close combat, let me see. Your Milo probably just walls the Houndoom. Keeping my sash, no, because the Houndoom has Sludge Bomb. But keeping my sash on Infernape is actually fine, because if it nasty plots, um, no, it's good. It's good. This is the right play. I don't think we're gonna kill through Intim with Earthquake, but I can calc it. Houndoom's physical defense is paper, though. We actually might. Pulse here. Yeah, or nasty plot, because it won't see a kill with anything. Yeah, because Sludge Bomb's resisted, right? Yeah. Okay, we win. Yeah. If if somehow, some way you don't kill, you have a sash. And uh Yeah. You're ready to learn Chinese, buddy. Alright, see ya. Let's go now you can catch Garatina. That was a fucking absolute masterclass, I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah, that was perfect. I didn't even need Togekiss. Following the Cyrus fight, we confront Giratina. I run because I'm an absolute chad. Anyways, we catch a Lunatone at Sendoff Spring and then head to Sunny Shore to fight Volkner. It's not a total pushover this time, but you have plenty of answers. Volkner is still pretty easy. You have a check for pretty much everything as long as you pivot around. I also fought Dahlia, but again, the game gives you so many answers that it's another decently easy fight. 
Victory Road is beyond boring and tedious, and then we have a fight with Marley, which is, yeah, also, also really easy. The next big box check and test before the Elite Four is our final matchup with Dawn. This fight is pretty scary, featuring the Demon Low Pony that we've grown accustomed to. The real kicker in this fight are her Clefable and Vaporeon, both of which can be absolutely unkillable under the wrong circumstances. They will wear your team down. I get caught absolutely off guard and lose 5 Pokemon to this fight, nearly wiping. I lose Torterra, Weavile, Gliscor, Tangrowth, and Tentacruel. I got totally PP sold and had no answer for it. This really sucks because Weavile, Gliscor, and Torterra can all go to the Elite Four under the right circumstances, so these are really bad losses. Our last fight before the Pokemon League is our final showdown with Barry. I fake out the Star Raptor and then get outsped and brought to a Sash from Double Edge. I then take care of the Star Raptor. When the Lax comes in, I sack Raichu to it and start to PP stall it with Spiritomb and Star Raptor. Once I'm safe, I toxic it to help wear it down, although I take a lot from a boosted struggle. Uh, I, I didn't totally see that coming. I kill Heracross with Brave Bird, and then I beat Arcanine with Choppleberry Rhyperior to lessen the impact of close combat from Arcanine. Breloom is beaten by Cross Poison from Drapion, and then Empoleon is 1v1 by Gyarados and killed with Earthquake. This wins us our last fight prior to the league. Renegade Platinum's Elite Four is absolutely nuts. It's among the hardest to plan for at ROM hacks because every single member, including the champion, can feature four different teams. I can't even begin to explain to you how intense this planning process is. Not only do you have to account for 20 different teams, but you also have to find ways to beat them in a way that is at least decently safe. Thankfully, there's a lot of Pokemon you can bring to this Elite Four. First, you could run a rain team, which would feature a Drizzlemon and some Swift Swimmers to absolutely clean up on Bertha and Flint, but I didn't have a Weather Setter, and I was actually opting to fight all the Bertha teams in Sand and three of the four Flint teams in Sun. So here's the team I built. First, Aerodactyl, the brave burning monster who can also put up rocks and fast taunt. Its defense is paper, but it hits hard. Metagross. Steel types are great in this Elite Four, and it offers massive defense as well as firepower on the back of its monster attack stat. It also offers priority and bullet punch, which is great. Your Hoenn starter does not offer this much upside, I can assure you. Drapion. The battle armor wielding physical tank with good coverage and dark stab for Lucian. Garchomp. Self-explanatory. Stab Earthquake. E-Speed. It's an obvious bring. Milotic. My fairy type special tank. This thing eats special moves and has strong stab special attacks. It also offers stall potential with recover if necessary. Lastly, Infernape, the Swiss Army Knife, offering great utility moves, speed, and powerful physical and special attacks. Depending on what teams we get, Infernape can do some pretty crazy stuff. It's fitting that our starter makes it to the final sequence of battles in the game. Now, let's head into the ringer. An arrow lead guarantees a Brave Bird kill on any of Aaron's leads. Safe to say, Scyther gets blasted. This gets Scizor out, which Infernape kills with Flamethrower and chains a second kill on Yen Mega as well. An attack here is guaranteed since it sees a kill with Hurricane, meaning that we do not have to worry about speed boost. Drapion is out next, and then I bring Garchomp in to kill it. Garchomp is like that, I'm afraid. There it is. Nice. <laughs> Bro, you can't make this up. Then I kill with Garchomp, needing a Scarf to outspeed since my Chomp is pretty slow. Flygon comes out, which is absolutely dunked on by my Lodic. I'm able to get Aerodactyl in on Pinsir's Megahorn after a pivot, and then kill it with Brave Bird. Now, it's time for Bertha. I put rocks up on the hippo and taunt it to stop it from getting its own rocks up. Then, I bring Milo in to KO it. This baits out Torterra, and I can chain a second kill with Ice Beam. 
Sudo Wudo is 1v1 by Metagross and two Iron Heads. Camera up comes out and I dodge an unlikely boom and whack it with Garchomp. I PP stall this Gliscor with my pressure arrow and bring Milo in when it starts struggling to kill it with Ice Beam. I then kill Rhyperior through both the special defense boost from Sand and Solid Rock, winning us our fight with Bertha. I lead Garchomp on Flint, hoping to chain some kills and absolutely body this fight. It's a Ninetales lead, which is one of our preferred matchups. I kill the lead Ninetales, the incoming Flareon, the Rapidash, and even the Choice Scarfed Houndoom through Intimidate, taking a Solar Beam safely in the process. Okay, so Magmortar is in, and I need to pivot to reset my attack drop. I have a design plan revolving around Infernape on the incoming Solar Beam, baiting a Fire Blast, believe it or not, into my Lodic. I had a Rindo Berry equipped on Milo so that the AI would only see a kill with Thunderbolt to get Garchomp in for free. The problem is, is that this doesn't work in Gen 4. The AI does not recognize the Resist Berry, so here's what ends up happening. Alright, show me a Solar Beam here. Okay, nice. All right, can we just yoink this? Gonna right now. No, because I'm baiting Thunderbolt back into Garchomp. Oh, does Garchomp kill at this range? Garchomp is faster. I just couldn't kill it through Intimidate. Okay, burn. Sli oh, I see. Slightly Sag. Oh no. I threw. Okay, no crit, 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 no crit. Holy shit. This Holy fucking shit. Oh shit, it has Mach Punch. <laughs> I don't even like... I don't need that energy, dude. Why does it not check... What the hell? Why does it not check the Resist Berry? Jesus, that's a throw and a half. Alright, we're... Fine. We're going to Lucian. Somehow, we made it this far. I don't know how, but we did. Lucian is arguably the hardest fight in the entire Elite Four, and even the whole game. I roll his hardest team. Alakazam! Oh, it's the Demon Team! Okay, we're gonna fake out to break the sash. We do not U-turn, we are slower. Okay, nice, this should always see a kill with Psychic, so we're going to Scarf Drapion. Okay. It did not matter. Nice. All right, we're choice banded to kill with earthquake. Okay, Starmie. 
It's gonna be Ice Beam. Alright. Oh, this is gonna be the mother of all pivots. But let's do it. We have Loveberry for freeze. Okay, then we U turn. Okay, this will be Hydro Pump. Alright, let me just protect. Oh, he heals again! I'm Infernape on another Ice Beam and do the exact same thing all over again. Okay, nice. That's a crit. Motherfucker. Oh, Thunderbolt. Okay, ready to move. Thunderbolt's fine. Just X Scissor. That way we're locked in. We were Sash, so... Alright. Let me kill this with Fly. So I have Fly and Brave Bird, because I didn't know what move I was getting Arrow in on. So if I was super low and I had to click Brave Bird, I would have just died. Nice. Alright, two X scissors kills this. We could get, like, sleep powdered, but, again, not really a big deal. Leech Seed, totally fine. Alright, we're going to Cynthia, baby. Woo! Alright, I kind of cooked him, I'm not going to lie. Theme of death. Alright, baby. Cynthia, try not to fuck me too hard. All right, what team are we getting? Milo lead. Okay. All right, so Milo lead is team two, I believe. Light screen is fine. We're killing like everything with physical moves in this anyways. Two cross poisons kills this. We have Lumberry for Scald Burn. No problem, we have Lumberry.
Nice. Okay, this is Garchomp. Alright, Drapion. You served us well, but it's time to die. Alright, Garchomp. Do your fucking thing. Alright. This is about to be two girls, one cup, but with Garchomps. Alright, we're gonna live on one HP, and then we're gonna guarantee the range with rough skin. Goodbye, Red 40. I love you almost as much as I love huffing chemicals. Crit did not matter, and we're gonna die to rough skin. Okay. Alright, hit one of these, please. Okay, good. Or does flamethrower kill this? Oh no, it's dragon type, right? Okay, we're gonna close combat. Double edge, totally fine. Alright. We're gonna just just work on this thing. It's probably a range of bullet punch. Nice. Alrighty. Goodbye, Milo. Alright. Everybody type, I was here. Just kidding. Down goes the Lucario. That's Renegade Platinum. We win. Let's fucking go, dude. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. I put countless hours into this run and the video editing process to ensure that this is as enjoyable as possible. It's also my birthday today. Well, that depends on when you're watching this, but the day this is being uploaded is my birthday. As a special request, I would politely ask anyone who enjoyed to subscribe and follow me on Twitch to catch this type of stuff live. I can confidently tell you that I have a lot of good things planned for this channel, and we will be pushing the difficulty up quite a bit in the coming videos. Thanks again, and I hope everyone has a great day.